Brother Miranda, if it's for you, I'd do anything. You're stupid. Just to be frank, Salvatore Moreau's story is just pitiful, sad, and twisted. I mean, just looking at the guy, we can already see the utter deformity that he's suffering from, known to be the outcast and looked down upon by the group of villains in this game. But yet, in the end, he did play a crucial role within Resident Evil Village as one of the four lords of the region and being one of the main obstacles that Ethan Winters had to go through to save his daughter Rose. So in this video, we'll be covering in detail the story of Salvatore Moreau, where we discuss his background, biology, concept designs and development, and his insecurities compared to the other four lords, and even his unhealthy obsession to please Mother Miranda. Upon first glance at Salvatore Moreau, we can already see the glaring difference compared to his fellow siblings, which out of the four lords, he was the one to appear the most grotesque and deformed, being a result of someone mixing man and fish, which in essence would fit perfectly with the Moreau family crest, with that being of a mermaid, though in Salvatore's unfortunate situation, he wouldn't be blessed with the appearance of one. This of course was all on purpose, with the central design point for Moreau was the half-human, half-fish-like creature, though resulting in a twisted version of this fusion, with the early concept designs and development of this character, can be traced back from the influences such as a Japanese yokai called Kappa, a semi-humanoid amphibian creature with webbed feet and a turtle carapace, which in further inspection of Salvatore Moreau's body, we can see some influences already with his hands and feet, and the mutated organs on his back place a similar shape to a turtle's hard shell. Also, these Kappa yokai were said to usually be known as less malevolent, and would play tricks on their victims, though they are also known to still be hostile to humans, especially when they're in water, which we'll get to see this characteristic from Moreau later on. Also another influence to his overall character design stems from the novel called The Island of Dr. Moreau, with said doctor known to have conducted experiments to make animals more human, hence the half-human, half-animal motif seen with Salvatore Moreau, though another concept art design that roughly resembles the finalized version that we see from Moreau was seen here, with the overall aesthetic aesthetic of his hunchback with the grotesque mutation is still the main feature, with the art director making a statement that describes the early designs of Salvatore Moreau, stating, a rough draft of Monster Moreau. He was always going to be a disgusting merman, and although his design didn't change that much, the parasite on his back was originally going to be a girl he once had feelings for. I'm always alone. Though the finalized version from what we see is the mixture of all the characteristics and influences we've just discussed, having amphibian traits of webbed hands and feet, the large organ mutation on his back, and still had the appendages similar to that of a fish, and the overall aesthetic of a half-human, half-animal motif, creating such a horrid-looking creature who appeared to suffer from his own mutation, causing him to live his life in a sad state, concealing most of his body in a full-body coat, even having a self-made crown to possibly give him some dignity and show of affluence, though it was known that this crown was made from the human bones of his victims. So as pitiful as his outward appearance seems to be, we have to remember that Salvatore Moreau in the end was still evil. Miranda sent you to slow me down? You're pathetic. Salvatore Moreau, like the rest of the four lords of this village, made his first appearance during the family meeting that included Lady D, Donna Bidiviento and her doll Angie, and Carl Heisenberg. Though unlike the rest of his fellow siblings, he got a not so friendly intro from the doll Angie. My daughters and I shall live with you. Though watching these scenes from a different angle, this small interaction between the four lords show Moreau to be the least liked, or more so the most uncared for. Even when he grovels while pointing at Angie, the only thing he got was Heisenberg shouting at him. This familial relationship between Salvatore Moreau and his siblings was noted to be in a not so great standpoint, usually Moreau being the lesser of the bunch, with some of his own statements reflect some of his inner insecurities. If you take it, then the others will laugh at me. They'll have to respect me if I kill you. Everyone makes fun of me. 
I mean, just reading and hearing those quotes alone is a quick tell of a childlike mannerisms and rebuttals he'll have, showing him to be very insecure with his position within his family, possibly longing to be seen as an equal of sorts, though to no avail. Evidently, with the cries and moans he makes, with the other voiceover lines found for Moreau had him crying at one point. <laughs> It just made you sympathize with him in a way, showing how lonely and disregarded he was, trying his best to be respected by his peers, but unfortunately for him, that does not happen. Instead, we can conclude that he's just been talked down before over and over by the other lords of this village. A prime example again with Angie and Heisenberg. <laughs> Though another relationship dynamic that was very pronounced with Moreau was his unhealthy desire for approval from Mother Miranda, which plays a huge factor for his overall personality and motives, but we'll get to that shortly. <laughs> So going back to the Four Lords meeting, here Moreau seldomly makes any kind of impact with Heisenberg and Lady D taking center stage as they decide on who would be the one to handle Ethan Winters. Though funny enough, while making this decision, a small statement from Mother Miranda was made here, which I suspect she refers to Moreau. I've heard all your arguments. Some of you were less persuasive than others. But after the meeting, we don't see much of him in the game. That is until we make it to his main area of the village, or unless we count the Duke's recollection of the Four Lords and the task to retrieve the flask to save Rose. The third is Moreau, a being of twisted flesh that lives in the reservoir past the windmill. So backtracking to the same area where we fought those lichen monsters with the boss monster Urias, the overall layout towards Moreau's reservoir is roughly the same. The biggest difference though was the main entrance initially blocked off, but now the surrounding setting is now littered with these green, bulb-like substances. This comes more in prominence as we move along inside Moreau's territory, passing through the village windmill and making our way down to Moreau's residence. And before we even initiate the upcoming cutscene, let's explore Salvatore Moreau's small small dwelling, and immediately upon going inside, is nowhere near the level compared to Castle de Matresque or the Beneviento house, which both of those areas were previously explored, showing how aesthetically pleasing and beautiful they were, showing signs of grandeur and nobility, though here in Salvatore's residence is the complete opposite, lacking any kind of semblance of a livable residence, with the main central items here was just an old TV and a bowl of cheese on the floor, but besides that, we can finally move on to the official encounter with Moreau. Here he would trick Ethan to a certain degree, paying homage to the influence of the Kappa Yokai we mentioned earlier. I mean again, just seeing him watch a static screen on TV and having a bowl of cheese on the floor was just sad. And I know he's the main villain of this territory as he says, but we can still see what kind of sad state he's been living in compared to the previous two lords we've just visited. <laughs> Anyways, moving on forward, we're now surrounded by more of these gross green bulb-like substances, as we know this coming from Moreau himself, trying to make our way out of this reservoir. Eventually, we would have a small interaction with Chris Redfield himself, and then we're met by this large fish-like creature, who eventually reveals that it's Salvatore Moreau. This ability of him being able to switch back and forth from his regular humanoid form to this large fish-like monster is still something to commend, but we'll talk more about his biology later on. Though the main premise here is we have to navigate our way around this huge lake area with the small amounts of structures to keep us from falling into the water, while Moreau continues to swim around the proximity, because traversing through this not so steady pathway, we have to be very careful not to be caught up with Moreau's attack, because it's essentially a game over once we fall into the lake, but after navigating our way throughout this reservoir, we're able to drain the whole area, leaving the larger mutated version of Moreau exposed, setting up the eventual boss battle encounter with them. In this boss battle against Moreau, to his credit, he was surprisingly a tough foe to handle. He's able to take on a lot of damage, especially from the many explosives in the area, to even from the caliber of weapon that I'm using against him. Also another aspect that was surprising was his mobility, because initially I thought this would have been a slow moving monster outside of his element, but I was wrong in that regard. Also mind you, he's not this sickly mutated looking humanoid we encountered from earlier, but instead this large behemoth fish monster, with Salvatore Moreau's main 
living humanoid body within this creature, which on several instances he will pop out, showing his main weakness, but as mentioned earlier, his main insecurities and longing for respect continues on with his ongoing statements during this boss battle. <laughs> But even with all that, Salvatore Moreau was still able to hold his own, being able to spit out projectiles of acid vomit, and sometimes to a point that he's able to climb up to higher ground and cover the entire place with raining acid. <laughs> But in the end, we do take him down, and in his last moments, he yells for Mother Miranda. In death as he was in life. Disgusting. As mentioned earlier, the dynamic that Salvatore Moreau had with his siblings portrayed him as a lesser of the lords, always wanting to gain the respect and feel of equality from his peers, though his behavior and the way he conducts himself seldomly portrays this, because this longing for acceptance, inclusion, and recognition from others was very much magnified when it came to his unhealthy obsession for Mother Miranda. As shown countless times during the course of this game with Moreau, he continues to grovel on how he can prove himself to her, showing his insecurities of being not the favored child of Miranda. And speaking of childlike behavior, this is most pronounced with the many quotes he makes during our encounters with him, with some actually pretty cringe in nature. Mama will praise me. Miranda, I'll make you proud, mother. I'm the best. Mother Miranda, I'm trying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mama. I'm, I'm doing this for you. Mother, me. Mama. This unhealthy obsession for Mother Miranda's approval or respect almost leans into the Oedipal's complex theory, with the main source of the behavior or feeling of the subject, Moreau in this case, showing signs of extreme possessiveness, wanting to be the main child of attention, going through any kind of lengths to appease her in his own sick and twisted way. Hence that quote he stated from earlier, Mother Miranda, if it's for you, I'd do anything. Of course, this statement is also backed up with some of the evil actions that Moreau has committed in the past, which was all in the name of Mother Miranda's desire of finding a suitable vessel for her deceased daughter Ava, which we can find some notes detailing this regal of experiments using the Cadeau, which it states, October 1, a sunny day, Mother Miranda brought me five peoples from the village, just like I asked. I made them sleep with some liquid, and then I put Cadeau in their tummies. I am looking forward to the Cadeau to grow in their tummies. October 2, a cloudy day. Four of the people from the village are dead this morning. One is almost a lichen. I sent it to my lab on the mountain. I failed again. Mother wants a strong vessel, but I cannot get any. I will need more peoples from the village. So as read, as much of a pitiful and sad state Moreau was, we have to remember that this guy was just as evil as any villain out there, doing anything he can to appease Mother Miranda, going so far to experiment on those innocent villagers in the area. Of course, the end result from this is the additional rampant amount of lichens we see infected from the Godot, though another no can be found in Moreau's laboratory area, which here it reveals how he created one of the more powerful sub-boss monsters within this game, which the note reads, Mother Miranda gave me a mountain, now I can do lots and lots of Godot experiments. This is my secret special laboratory. I did three Godot experiments today, but they all went pop and made a mess. I put in the Godot, then I tried putting wolf blood from a needle into the spine. The person wriggled a lot and then killed my assistant. I could not hold it down so I put it in the cage. Now I have to feed it. Which this references the Varkolak monster we encountered several times around this point in the game. This story point from the note again plays on the influence from the novel, The Island of Dr. Moreau, which here Salvatore was mixing wolf blood with a human infected with a Godot parasite, living up to that novel, which Dr. Moreau's experiment in creating a human-animal hybrid, which all these atrocities and experiments that Salvatore has done was all for Mother Miranda, but as much as Moreau's unhealthy desire for Mother Miranda's approval, this sentiment is not reciprocated, because we're going to be covering Mother Miranda's thoughts about him, and also his biology, and some of the background history to his character. I'll do better next time, Mama. 
Subject name, Salvatore Moreau, Godot affinity, low. Brain function, surprisingly low. The Godot has caused drastic changes to internal organs, transforming them into organs similar to fish-like gills and a swim bladder. Another subject with irregular cell division causing him to transform into a giant fish. The subject is unable to control this transformation. Too many defects, an unfit vessel for Ava. So as read, Mother Miranda didn't hesitate to point out the flaws of Moreau. In this report, in essence, explains some of the childlike behavior he had. This in part was due to his surprisingly low brain function as Mother Miranda stated. Also more on his biology. The tentacles that we see sprouting on his mutated back is due to the Godot parasite infesting inside of his body. On top of that, the internal changes to his anatomy caused him to have fish-like organs, resulting into the subsequent abilities and traits that we saw, which included his large fish-like monster transformation and his ability to produce the acid vomit-like enzymes. Also, a small picture from Mother Miranda's lab shows the inner workings of the Godot within Salvatore Moreau's mutated body. Also, to further explore the design behind his biology, more concept art information can be seen here, with some of the notes reiterating some of the details we've already covered earlier in the video, which it states, Moreau made a crown for himself out of the bones of the villagers. He's also the most corroded by the parasite than any other lord. The concept behind his design is that he's a half-fish, half-man, and we used a number of creepy secrets creature parts while also conveying a very Resident Evil series style monster. But unlike most of the other transformed creatures in the series, he still understands and can speak human speech, a rare monster that can communicate. His brain has swollen into his back, which has also sprouted eyeballs. His design was also based on the Japanese river yokai, Kappa. Moreau's mutated form looks a lot more like an aquatic creature, as each of the boss fights are giant versions of themselves. Moreau is a massive mer creature covered with frog spawn looking eyes. He uses his large arms and legs as well as his giant fish-like body to swim. This piece was used to visualize Moreau's acid vomit attack as well as his humanoid body inside of the mouth of his monstrous body. We try to convey his creepy aquatic nature in each movement and each attack. I'm the best! Also, another topic we need to cover is Salvatore Moreau's life prior to his infection with the Godot. There are speculations that Moreau's history had him as one of the fishermen within the area. A small nautical tattoo is seen on his left arm, with a jellyfish and the word mother is shown. Of course, this plays on the stereotype of sailors usually having some type of nautical tattoo representing their profession. But in this case with Moreau, it's just another unhealthy sign of his obsession he had for Mother Miranda. Also, another speculated theory about Moreau was that his family could have been the main doctors within this village area, with the sign of the Moreau's clinic pointing out this small reference. And of course, going back to his early concept design and influence, it's not a far-fetched idea that someone within the Moreau family could have been the doctor due to the influence from the novel The Island of Dr. Moreau that we spoke about earlier. But in the end, besides this grotesque biological mutation, not much more is known about his past. The lack of documents or notes in regards to his history speaks volumes, which just amplifies that Salvatore Moreau himself was not someone of clear importance to be documented on within this village region, again playing on that point of being the outcast and the lesser compared to the other lords of this area, exemplifying the sad and pitiful state that was Salvatore Moreau's story. Anyways, what did you guys think of Salvatore Moreau during RE Village? Did you guys like him, feel bad for him, or do you think he deserved what happened to him during the course of this game? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed the content, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Heydeva, and I'll see you guys on the next video. In death as he was in life. Disgusting.